92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and soon to be audio and video on RTC Channel 4. Hey, Scott. Good morning, sir. Welcome back. It's good to see yeah, you. Yeah, nice, it's nice to see you. Yes. By golly, it's been a while, you know. Yes. I'll tell you what. Time now for our Community Foundation Show. And, of course, that means Brian Johnson is the star, and he's in the studio. Brian, good morning. Well, I don't know about that star part, but I'm <laughs> here in the studio, I think. So. Nice to have you with us. Well, it's a nice day. I think Mr. Rogers would say it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. He would indeed it definitely say definitely is. Exactly. Don't make him much of course, he said that even when it was raining. So, it, he yeah. did, but... <laughs> He was a pretty good guy. So. Yes, he was. Hey, you've, you've been busy. We've got a lot of Foundation, things going been on. busy. We do have a lot of things going on. Of course, this is scholarship time. Right. So we've had the um, joy of going to a couple of um, scholarship honor nights um, at Rochester and Caston. Looking forward to later this week going to Tippecanoe Valley High School and then next week to Pioneer to, to hand out some scholarships. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about scholarships okay. here towards the end of the program, but um, wanted to say congratulations to the class of 2018. Um, it's it's neat to see all the accomplishments that have already happened by these students. We we always say, well, they have a bright future. Well, they've already been busy doing things, making things happen, making an impact in our community. Um, it's it's always fun. We have a board member that he says, well, if you hear somebody say kids are the problem today, <laughs> sit on a scholarship committee sometime exactly. and you'll find out that that's not the case. So congratulations to the class of 2018 um, on your accomplishment. We look forward to um, seeing the great things that are still yet to come. Um, and thank you for all that you've done for our community so far, because these kids really get involved and, and do good things for our community. So. And like you Wonderful said, uh, Rochester High School Awards Night was bigger and better than ever. Bigger and better than ever. And it just, those those award nights just keep growing. Right. It's, it's really amazing. Um, we we had the opportunity to hand out about 25 different scholarships at, at Rochester. And um, that number just keeps growing. Um, so thank you to all the donors who have made that possible. Um, not only our scholarships, but there were literally hundreds of scholarships handed out that evening. It, it's really wonderful to see that. So talking about scholarships, um, we, we just got through the round of for high school graduates, but we also have some summer scholarships. Okay. So um, they're not quite up on our website yet, but here in the next week or so, um, keep an eye um, scholarships that are not necessarily for high school graduates, but um, maybe for something specific. So we have things like the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship for students going to law school, um, Ginger Miller Higher Education for students who are pursuing something beyond a bachelor's degree. Um, the Back Home Again in Indiana Scholarship is another one. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody seeking a degree. It could be somebody seeking a degree, but maybe somebody needs some additional training for their current position, um, a certificate, something along those lines. Um, that scholarship can help those students um, obtain that as well. So um, keep an eye on our on our website. Um, those scholarships will be up um, probably in the next week or so. Okay. Um, if you have questions about it, don't hesitate to give us a holler. Um, we'd love to help um, help you continue your education if that's if one of those fits you. So um, encourage folks to keep an eye on that. You bet. Something else that just happened yesterday, I walked down and saw all these banners hanging on these posts and um, a neat program that um, the Scioto Zai sorority here locally has has worked on the last couple of years, um, an art banner project. So I'd encourage folks, if you haven't seen downtown Rochester in the last day or so, stop by and they see these. Nice. These are... Um, the Scioto sorority does a contest in the schools and then the winners are displayed on the banners downtown and so they have a, a little bit of a mix of course this is the second year they've been able to do this program um, in a partnership with the honeywell foundation and so they have some new banners I, I walked up and down the street yesterday and checked out some <laughs> of the new banners really impressive um, anywhere from all the way from k through 12 um, projects it's it's wonderful to see um, kind of freshen up downtown and see some of the things that some of the the kids at school are working on and um, I'm not an artist so I just marvel at kids being able to draw a lot and, of creativity and it, it is there. it is pretty cool and a lot of 
a lot of neat colors. So congratulations to all the students that participated in that. Um, of course, we were able to grant this year to that help um, support that project and, and look forward to that project really sprucing up downtown. So neat to see that. Um, something else can we say as heard on WROI, um, the Go for School Safety program. Um, we have been talking with um, the folks from Good Oil Company, and they wanted to do a program to help provide some funds for um, local school safety. That's been a, a really big topic. How do we sure how do we make schools safe, protect right. students, um, create a safe learning environment for them? And and the folks involved with, with Good Oil have a passion for helping schools. And so um, the idea hatched. And so they're actually running a promotion. Um, we have a fund in Fulton County, Go for School Safety Fulton County. And there are similar funds in Stark County and Pulaski County. And what will happen is, obviously, we accept donations to those, but also Good Oil um, at their stations are... Um, helping give some of the proceeds so if you if you've been by the station on 4th street or um, out at the intersection of 14 and 25 there's pumps that have um, caston and rochester skins on them um, Tippecanoe new valley is coming soon okay um, i heard that the akron station is due for some um, renovations here in the near future, and they're going to be putting a skin up there for um, Tippecanoe Valley. But um, Good Oil will be, will be donating three cents from every gallon purchased at those pumps um, to this fund. Also, some car wash um, proceeds um, from their car washes in the area. And like I said, similar programs going on in Stark County and Pulaski County. Um, and eventually these will turn into grants um, for the school corporations to help them um, with some safety needs, whether it be things like surveillance, um, security needs on doors, sure. things like sure. that. Um, some smaller things that they may not be able to afford in their budget. And so we're, we're excited to help with this program. So if folks are interested in that, want to make a donation, check out. Um, you can check out our website, NICF.org, and, and make a donation to one of those funds. So um, exciting to... Okay. to to see that so and thanks to thanks to good oil don good and the and his group over there for um promoting our schools and helping them make them a safer place so another big event that we had um was the fulton county women's giving circle social um, we had that on may 10th um, that's a group of women that make a annual contribution of $120. Half of it goes to an endowment fund that grows, and that fund has actually grown to the point now where it's providing um, some additional support for grants. And the other half are used to make grants in our community. Okay. So what happens is they get together once a year, have um, grant applications that are reviewed by a grants committee, and then invite finalists to come to their social and give a presentation. Um, this year was the most they've ever been able to give out, $6,500. Um, they had four finalists that came and presented and, and received some funds. So um, a couple of organizations, um, Friends of Recycling and Champions Together, a special Olympics program through Tippecanoe Valley School Corporation, each received $1,000. Friends of Recycling is, is promoting some additional recycling in our community, working with the schools to help students understand how recycling impacts our community in a positive way. And then Champions Together is a, a special Olympics program that combines students that may have special needs with the general population and, and the idea being that both groups get to learn from each other and, and have a have a fun. Um, they have some specific um, sporting events. I think flag football, uh, track okay. meet. Excellent. Um, they didn't invite me to come play flag football. <laughs> I must be too old and washed up not, on that. Not, but not quick enough, right? <laughs> apparently not. I don't know that I was ever quick, but um, a really neat program there. Fulton County Historical Society received two thousand um, dollars. They are in need of um, doing some drainage work and also some new landscaping out at the museum. Um, and then Girls on the Run received twenty five hundred dollars. This is a newer program um, through the um, grade schools. Charlie Schwank mm -hmm. has done such a great job with the running program, and this is a program that teaches girls not only the skill of running but some life skills um, how to 
how to deal with issues and, and interact and um, some of those lifelong skills right. um, that that program and, and really encourage and support and provide mentors for these girls. So it's wonderful to see how these four organizations will be um, impacting our community. And thank you to all the women who are part of the Women's Giving Circle. Um, looking back in 2010, we had a had a steering committee that got together and said, well, we're not sure how this is going to go, but we think <laughs> we should try this. And after the grants this year, the group has been able to give out $44,500 in grants to community needs. And Isn't that great? And, and it's great. neat when you, when you look at it. My wife is a member of this group, and right. we write out a check for $120 every year, and it turns into $6,000 or $6,500 in grants. A neat right. way to, to pool that and make a big impact in our community. So, so thanks to all the women who are members of that. So, well, today we wanted to talk, continue our, our anniversary conversation. Sure. Of course, it's the month of May, talking about graduates. So what better to talk about than scholarships? So just kind of some general numbers. Um, right now at the foundation, we have 71 scholarship funds. That's a lot. It, it's interesting when folks walk in our door the one thing that they often understand is what a scholarship is. And so a lot of times not a whole lot of explanation needed on that, but it, it's neat to see how these individual funds, and we'll talk about a few of them um, that we have, can benefit students. Um, looking back, we've made almost $2 million in scholarship um, awards, not counting the Lilly Scholarship. Um, and it, that's just an amazing number when it I is, look at that really and say, is. you know, how many kids have, right. have been helped by this and, and helped encourage, I mean, not only the financial, but for somebody to say, hey, you meet this criteria and we think you can succeed and we want to help support you in this. Um, that's a really big part of that, knowing that the community believes in these students. Um, talking about the Lilly Scholarship, um, since that program started in 1998, We've had 37 students in Fulton County receive that scholarship um, and almost $3 million um, paid out to those students to help them. Of course, that scholarship provides full tuition to an Indiana sure. school. Um, and, and it's neat to see what some of those kids, and we're starting to get some of those back in our community, um, have actually had one former Fulton County Lilly Scholar join. Well, I can't say former because they're always a Lilly Scholar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's successfully graduated and has actually joined our Community Foundation Board now. So it, it's neat to see how those students are starting to give back to our community. So talking a little bit about some of the specific scholarships, um, the Simon Deeb Scholarship. Cy was a name synonymous with the ag program at rochester whenever i mention his name i always hear Cy stories <laughs> um, and he always always had something interesting to say but um it i don't think i could count how many people have said yeah you know what he really impacted my life and mm -hmm. and not only taught me but encouraged me and helped me develop as a person not only as a student um, of course with him being a staple in the Rochester Ag Program. Um, that scholarship goes to support students pursuing an ag-related field um, that are graduates from Rochester High School. One thing that's neat is when we sit down with these scholarships, people often ask us, well, why do you have to be doing this or why, why is this important? And when we sit down with donors and, and talk about scholarships, um, really it's, it's up to that donor to say these are the important criteria um, for this. So in, in the case of size scholarship, ag was, was something that played a big role in his life, not only as an ag teacher, but also um, his family background was, was involved in agriculture. So wonderful to see that scholarship. Um, another one, we talk about the non-traditional scholarships, um, the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship. Of course, um, Frederick was a judge in Fulton County, an attorney, also on, served for a year on the Indiana Supreme Court. Um, so that scholarship provides support for students who have spent at least three years of their high school career at a Fulton County school and are going to a law school somewhere in the United States. Okay. Um, and we have a number of students, not only who have completed that, but are now working back in this area as attorneys or in some, in some capacity. So you kind of get that snapshot of, well, this was this was important to Frederick and his family. Um, another one that that 
um, comes to mind, the David Ewing McCarter Athletic Scholarship. You can't mention David's name without thinking about athletics and the whole McCarter family. Um, Part of the criteria for that scholarship is that a student must have played two different sports for four years. And you ask, well, why Why is okay. that? We think about the Rochester tennis program, the Rochester basketball program. Yeah. Um, those were two things that, that David was very involved in, was very talented. Um, and so when, when his parents established that scholarship, those were some things that were important to them as we looked at that scholarship. Um, another one that's that's kind of interesting is the Roy Haggerty Memorial Scholarship. When you start looking at the criteria, there's some preferences in there. Preferences given to students who are studying a medical field. Of course, it's it's IU, so our Purdue friends, you sure. want to put your earphones on for a second because <laughs> we're talking about an IU scholarship. But um, the Haggerty Scholarship, it, it goes to students IU, and then it gives preference things like a medical field or somebody who's been involved in the baseball program or a student who's involved in music. And it's kind of interesting when you start looking at that and think, well, why is that? Um, it's it's kind of neat. We have on loan from the Historical Society a display um, from the 1930s, a baseball uniform that Roy Haggerty wore <laughs> while he played with the Rochester Retail Merchants baseball wow. team. So there's the baseball connection. His wife, um, Donabelle, who actually established the scholarship, um, we we're just given a picture of her playing a harp and she was a very accomplished harpist um, played with like the South Bend Symphony in some different areas um, but it's a picture from I think 1928 of her taking harp lessons in Chicago cool. and so you start seeing some of these connections and, right. and Roy it's the medical thing is always kind of an interesting thing because Roy was a very accomplished architect but one of his dreams had always been to be a doctor. He wasn't able to complete that, but through the scholarship, it's it's honoring that desire. So it, it's kind of neat when you see some of those those things happening, um, and, and you look at that and you say, "Well, why in the world are these things involved in this scholarship selection?" And it really is about honoring that person. So in this case, Roy Haggerty, his love of baseball, his his wife's enjoyment of music, um, interest in the medical field. So it, it's fun when we start to look at some of those. And even though I never had the opportunity to meet either of them personally, you kind of get a glimpse of, of what they were about. Sure. Um, and, and the last one that I want to mention is um, the Elizabeth V. Babcock Scholarship. It's, it's kind of a neat scholarship. Um, that scholarship was created by Elizabeth Babcock. And she... Um, wanted to help support students that were graduates of Rochester High School. And it's been fun to see that scholarship because that scholarship was transferred to the foundation in 1996. Um, we look at some of the numbers. Um, the scholarship itself was about $560,000 as it was transferred to the foundation. So we're looking back a little bit over 20 years. Um, I just looked up the numbers. Since 96, the scholarship has provided over $530,000 to graduates of Rochester High School. Amazing. Um, and scholarship support. And the neat thing is that fund has actually grown larger than when the gift was given, plus the gifts that have been given out. So um, looking at endowment funds, it, it next year we'll be sitting here having the conversation, say, you know what, the Babcock has given out this much more than this time last year. So wonderful to see that. And, and that's also a scholarship. Um, part of what a foundation does is look at current needs in our community. Um, of course, when Elizabeth created that scholarship in the 70s, nobody had heard the term dual credit class. Um, so when Rochester started offering dual credit classes, that was something that the high school had actually approached us and said, is there any way that any of your scholarships can help support some of these students that can't afford dual credit classes? Of course, it's all already very much more affordable than taking a college class. Sure. Um, and students get those credits and they come out of high school ready to um, go further into their education. Um, and so that was one that we we're actually able to look at the criteria, 
um, and get um, work through the court system to revise that scholarship. So now a portion of that can actually help students taking dual credit classes, um, make things even more efficient, be even a wiser use of that. But that's just an example of how a foundation, how we as a community foundation look at the current needs and say, you know what, this may have been an something that this donor was interested in and being able to help support those things in our community as as times change and as needs change so that's just four of the 71 that's four of the 71 <laughs> and we could we could probably talk all day and hear a lot of stories about these but it, it's wonderful to see how these when you look at that um, between our scholarships and the lily scholarship over five million dollars in scholarships to area students um, it, it's wonderful to see how that how our community has supported that and um, continues to support that and and like we said, the awards nights next year will exactly. be even bigger bigger than this year. It continues so to grow. It does so. Well, if you have questions about anything that we talked about today, you can always um, find us online nicf.org. Um, like us on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, just a quick reminder um, about summer scholarships. Those will be up here in about the next week. So if you're um, looking for um, some scholarships to continue your education, make sure you check out those, both Facebook and the website. Um, you can always give us a call, 224-3223. Or for about the next month, you can stop by our office on Main <laughs> Street, 715 Main Street. Um, after that, we'll be at 227 East 9th Street. So I'm looking. So next month when we have this radio program, hopefully our move will be complete. Okay. And, um, but we'd look forward to hear um, a lot of the things that happen through the foundation are because somebody says, hey, I have an idea. How can I make this happen? Um, we can often provide the financial um, support for that, but it's really because people have said, hey, this is something that we need and we can make an impact on this. And, and thank you to everybody who does that. It makes Fulton County a better place to live, work, and play. Brian Johnson, thanks very much. Thanks for being here. And uh, thanks for all you and all the folks at the foundation do for Fulton County. It's been great. Well, it's all because of our donors. So. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Tom.